Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jessica. And we are so excited for this class. Today we are going to be using color pour paint. Yes. There is two different types. We have some regular color pour and then there's also some color pour magic. magic. Yes. Um, so we'll be talking about the differences between them and trying them both out. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll show you some different techniques you can do. Yep. So grab a few um, canvases. We just have these small ones because these are really nice to yep. maneuver around. Mm -hmm. And then you'll want something to drip everything in. It's very messy. Yeah. So any of the techniques we're doing, you can do with either the regular color pour or the color pour magic. Um, you just get, yeah, a little bit different effects from each. Yeah. Yeah. So get something to drip in. Um, those like foil things, what are they called? Tins. Tins. Foil tins. For cooking. For cooking. Those yeah, those good. work really great. Um, really great. And, or any just like nonstick surface. I like to put like wax paper or something underneath. Yeah. Um, just something that'll peel off easily. First, we will be doing the dirty pour technique. This is where we pour all of the paint into the cup first and then we dump the cup onto the canvas. I like starting with this technique just because it's like you just dive in right away. Right. It's very beginner friendly. You yeah. don't really need a lot of skill for this. <laughs> yeah. You just pick out colors that you think look good together and just go with it. Just go with it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we do recommend gloves. It, it is really messy, mm -hmm. but a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it'll wash off your hands easy enough, though, too, if you don't have gloves. Um, if you get any on your clothes, you can uh, wash it off like before the paint dries and you'll be fine. Or you can wear a feeling crafty apron yeah. like we are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to fill the cup, at least a cup this size, a little bit more than halfway. Um, I would say it's a lot easier to start off using more paint than less. Uh, especially when you are a beginner, it just makes it so the paint flows over the edges easier. Um, and if you just, it just gives you a little bit more to work with. And um, you'll want to shake up your paints. Give them a good shake uh, before you start using it. And um, so I like to pour them in. There's not really like a great way. You just get the paint in the cup. Um, you'll see as we start layering, the harder you push the bottle, the paint will squeeze to the bottom of the cup. So I like to more just gently let the paint fall into the cup. Mm -hmm. I think I'm doing blues too. Yeah. This one is called mint. But it, it looks more like turquoise. Yeah, they have some really pretty blue shades. Oh yeah, I like that color. Um, they also have some metallics, which are really nice. Oh, I'm using some silver, and it just it brings a little shimmer to this one is green. Let's know. Have you ever done color pour painting or any type of fluid painting? Yeah. Have you tried it? Are you scared to try it? Yeah. It looks kind of scary. Yeah, messy, I hear but... a lot of people are scared to try it, but really it's kind of foolproof. Yeah, um, you really just have to just try. Jump yeah. in and yep. go for just it. Go for it. Um, a beginner, as a beginner, I would only choose a few colors. Like, I wouldn't yeah. go crazy with your colors because they could be all muddy. And... Yeah, and if you don't know what color you should use... Uh, try to stick in like color groups. So right, like right. right now we're both kind of all doing, doing blues. I'm doing blue and a, like a green. Yeah. So these, this is what I'm doing. And then I also added in silver. Um, I want some, some metallic something. Gold? Mm -hmm. Copper? Is There's it? a champagne. Oh yeah, that. Copper. Gold, yeah. Champagne. Just get a nice metallic look. Hmm. You have a lot more paint than me. Yeah. I don't know if you can see my cup. It's pretty full. I'm I'm not there yet. <laughs> I when 
teaching this class, I always like to start with the um, the dirty pour, just because it it's, it just dumps all of the paint yeah. on the canvas it's, all at once. There's no time to just there's be not like, a oh, lot I'm of scared of it. You technique just dump it, it on yeah. and you go. Let's see. We have more champagne. Um, the only other tip I'd give is if you're using like black. Oh. Um, it's very overpowering, so maybe you only Be use careful. like half as much black as what you think. I'm gonna use all the champagne. Even a quarter. Use a quarter as much black. I hope you didn't want any. I'm good with my silver. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> okay. You think that's, that's good? That's good. Yeah. And then if you if you find you find out you do need more paint you can go back in on your canvas and yep. add paint and connect it together all right Ready? now we're just going to take the canvas put it on top of our cup you see that yeah <laughs> then we're just gonna flip it like the most scary part right here <gasps> then we can let gravity kind of work a little bit so a lot of technique right here this is just then we'll just start to Flip slowly up. lift up our cup. Woo! Mine was not slow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, look at those colors together. And then here's where we're going to start moving our canvas around to try to get it to cover up the whole canvas. You can leave white space too if you yeah. want. Like if you just want to your paint all be in the center maybe or I was like one side. to make sure um it goes over all of the edges and uh you really gotta watch out for the corners yes because the corners like to be left blank they don't so you just keep tilting it that's all you're really doing here anybody can tilt a canvas yep you can do it you're not liking your design, how it is, tilt it the other way. Yeah. <laughs> um, if sometimes um, it just makes the flow a little easier if the canvas is already wet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm kind of going over with my finger over the corners just to help it flow over those corners a little better. Yeah. I'm making such a big mess already. Yep. And then also what you can do is, um, after you let these completely dry, um, your drips, you cannot actually peel them off and use them kind of as stickers. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, um, you should have grabbed your journal. Oh, yeah. She made a journal cover with the drippings of a color pour. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? So it's not like what you're dripping off is just wasted. Yeah. You can you still can use, use it. Yeah. Does dry much faster. I'd still. Two. Then I also like to, after I have it completely covered. I like to run my finger along the edges and drip off any extra. Mm -hmm. More will drip off as it dries too. Um, you may want to move it a couple times in the middle of drying. So in case it does dry, you mm -hmm. won't be left with like a little ed ledge yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, Bonnie says pretty, but a little messy. Yes, Bonnie. Yes, definitely. It's very messy, but it's so fun. I'm still tilting mine around. I'm trying to get um, some of my darker colors over here to come down a little bit. Ooh, looks kind of beachy. Yeah. Water at the beach. Oh, I like your dark blue. Is that mm -hmm. navy? What is that? I think it's the navy. Yeah. Keep 
drip, drip. I'm getting a nice petal here mm -hmm. on the bottom that I can, you know, turn into something else. Yes, it's so much fun. Okay. I think mine's about yeah, done. I think mine's done. I'm gonna kind of yeah. check my edges. Let's see if you can see much differences between the magic and the <clears throat> the original. I have the original. Mm -hmm. Um so you do see a few of the cells around in here. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Mine, mine you can kind of see more over here. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. And I'm still really dripping. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they'll keep dripping for like another Forever. hour and then <laughs> usually after that hour they'll be done dripping. So that's when I like to pick them up and put them on a different surface mm -hmm. so they don't get that ledge. If you do have that ledge, you can just take an X-Acto knife or something and just cut it off right. after it's dried. Uh, Bonnie's asking what we will do with the canvas. Um, these are just, I don't know, you can set them up wherever you want. You yeah. can set them on a shelf, put it on your wall. You could um, attach a photo to it, be kind of like a really cool frame. Yeah, you can cut it out of the canvas if you wanted like, more just like a scrap piece of something mm -hmm. um, to like put into an art journal or um, yeah, really anything. But now I have so many of these paintings though, I don't know what to yeah. do with them. We have a lot that are on the wall in the back of the warehouse. Yeah. Than... I'm gonna pass this one over to you. You're gonna yeah. pass it over, it's gonna well, drip all over me. <laughs> Well, you put yours. Well, maybe because well, we, we have our drawing table over there. We should have brought them closer to us. Okay. <laughs> Don't trip over. Okay. Are you good? Do I have any big drips? Go fast. Okay. When you want to set it somewhere to dry that you don't care about the bottom. Mm -hmm. So we have these trays. Put it on a piece of paper, cardboard. Cardboard box would be good too. Um, wow, look at that. I have like a yeah. whole other project yeah. right here. <laughs> All right, next we can do, let's do the swipe technique. Um, so this one, this technique has a little bit more control than the dirty pour does. We're just going to be pouring the paint directly onto the canvas rather than just in the cup and it just ends up wherever. Any it goes. Yep. <laughs> oh, you're already getting blue in yours. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I think I'm going to go for some purples. Ooh. And I'm also thinking of mixing the color pour magic with the original. With the original. Color That's yeah. great. I'm gonna go with I don't know. Pinky. Pinky. So with the swipe technique, we're going to start just by laying out I'm getting a lot of blue on this. <laughs> okay. It'll get covered. Um I like to do it like in lines or if you have um like a specific pattern or something. Um, so then when we swipe it, it hmm. will swipe like the first color into this next color and it'll just kind of drag through the whole painting. Let's see. I'm gonna go with pinks. This one is called brick. I'm gonna go purple. Looks kind of like a deep pink. It doesn't look oh, red. That is a nice pink. This one is mauve. Peony and peony. I got two in the same color. Give me that green. Yeah. And probably a different metallic. Which one do you want? I don't know. What's this? Peach? Hmm. I know you said peach. There's gold left. 
I really love the metallics. They just get that nice shimmer to them. Hmm. hmm. Picking the colors is always I think the that's trickiest like the part. part. Yeah. It takes because it time. really it yeah it can make or break your piece. Yeah. If you do a lot of dark colors, that mm, could that be too be dark. Kind of too dark. This is really messy. Maybe I need a different tray. Good. Um, so yeah, I'd say if you're kind of struggling with picking colors, just try to keep it to a more limited color palette. Let me grab some of these. Oh, I'm gonna go this way. Ooh, that's a really nice one. Alright. Now, I'm using a palette knife, but you can really use a lot of different things. You can use a piece of cardboard. You could use, um... You could use a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock, something that's a little heavier. And what we're going to do is, I think I need a lot more paint, but we're just going to lightly drag our palette knife or whatever you're using on top of these colors. Um, you don't want to dig into the colors. We're just like lightly brushing the tops. I don't want to put my gold in between. So why not? And then as I start to tip this, the colors will start showing, well, like the cells in this paint will start showing through. They're starting already a little bit. Mm -hmm but they'll just expand as they get spread out. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. So you can already see some tiny little cells. Let me just start. Oh yeah, I see them opening them up. Ooh. Yep. It's very relaxing. Just so mm -hmm. much poop. Move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. Cause it it's just like it just flows right yeah. off the canvas. You don't have to worry about technique or getting. Yeah, getting paint something right to look a certain way. It's just watch the paint flow. Watch it flow. And that's all you can do. Get my edges. I'm liking these colors too. Look at that gold. Yeah, those are mm. nice colors together. I think gold. I like that good gold. With anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the metallics if really I can add, add gold to something. I will. Yeah, it really adds to it. Sparkle, shimmer. Love you can see I have. A lot more bubbles down here. Oh, it looks a little bit orangey on camera, but it's pink. Different shades of pink and gold. I got some good lines going on. I'm trying to make this line here kind of go down more, maybe. I did also want to interest. Want to show you can use either a heat tool or a. Um, this is the Tim Holtz air blower. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, that might be a little too hard, but you can open up more cells by going mm -hmm. around and adding some air. You can also do this with a straw, mm -hmm. like, and use your breath. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're not super happy with your painting or you feel like it could have a bit more, you can do this and that'll open up more cells. Um, if you push too hard, that's when like I kind of get like the paint really opening up. Yeah. Um, well, it still, add, it still texture, adds to it. Yeah, you know? it still adds to it. Yeah. I think I'm going to use that too. I'm going to try to put these gloves back on. Good luck with that. <laughs> cool. I'm just kind of adding some more interest here and there. Mm hmm. Then I think I might also use some foil flakes on this oh, one. Oh yeah, I want to use my foil flakes. Right. See if we can shake off any more paint. Um, the drying does is a lot quicker if you try to shake off as much paint as you can. It also can leave your um, the finish of your painting a bit smoother. You really use try to, mm -hmm. um, you know, get all of the extra paint off. Mm -hmm. Mine's kind of leaning up on my tray right here, so it's mm. very slowly going down. Just kind of see where I want to add some more interesting details. I like it. Let's get out the all flakes. Right, the flakes. Um, so Color4 does have their own types of flakes but really you can use any type of flake um you can use glitter too mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. kind of sinks in a little bit more than what a flake does flakes are just a little bit lighter but yeah go also for whatever you have very messy yeah <laughs> but you know what you're flake. already getting messy so yeah might as well make it doesn't matter make it more um when i'm applying foil flakes i like to pick a few areas where i like mm -hmm. to concentrate the flakes at you could try to like go along some of your lines mm -hmm. um and or like your edges a or... lot of times less is more sometimes mm -hmm. more is more <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it doesn't happen that sometimes way sometimes you just it, you don't know what it's yeah do. it depends on what you're feeling if you're feeling glittery just go for it so i'm kind of following see oh i accidentally dropped those but mm -hmm. i'm kind of following my kind of main swirly line here see that but yeah, also this gets I'm going everywhere too yeah yeah it you can't be too specific unless like you want to grab like some tweezers to mm. uh, apply it idea. yeah i try not to be too picky. try not to breathe on it either or sneeze mm -hmm. or cough because mm -hmm. they're gonna fly. fly everywhere it will um, and as I'm picking it up, some pieces are a little bigger, so I just kind of mush them in my fingers mm -hmm. to break them up a bit. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep mine, or at least most of mine, Ooh. centered here. And this is the, I think it's rose gold, maybe? I think that's what it is. I'm also going to use just the regular gold, because I think that will look nice gold mm -hmm. over there i like how small these are some flakes mm -hmm. are bigger and chunkier and um i'm gonna be um Having flakes following me everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, it's like glitter. It just yeah, you find it a week later. Yep. In some ways, I feel like it's worse than glitter because it's so light. Oh, it's just like yeah, you just in the air, <laughs> just flying, floating. That's, yeah, it gives such a cool look. Mm -hmm. Whoop! That was a big chunk. And if you do get a piece where you don't really want one, you can try to pick it out. Um, it might mess up your painting a little bit um, because the paint mm -hmm. starts to set and that's when you get like the nice finish. 
Um, but you can always fix it. You can, yeah. I mean, you can go back. You it's can add. Forgivable. Yeah. Okay. You I can add like a varnish or something to the top. Yeah. Well, since you have gloves on, do you want to move mine? For sure. <laughs> Now I have glitter all over me. I'm gonna get a little blue. Oh, don't on get it. blue on it. Oh no. Can we go for it? Okay. Made it. Here we go. Okay. All right. New clips. We have in the past we have done color pour classes in person and those were so much fun. Yeah. That is a fun class. Um, and it's very messy. But... Yeah, it's a very messy class, but everyone's come out so different. Mm -hmm. um, we did, what was it, last fall? We did pumpkins. Paint, paint poured paint on pumpkins. That yeah, was yeah, so you don't just have to paint pour onto just a canvas. You can do objects. Yeah. yeah. You could do like um like a vase, mm -hmm. a bowl. Um, I don't know, other like decorative pieces. And then you don't also I've seen some really cool um like more realistic paintings. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen butterflies and trees and mm -hmm. um so it doesn't have to just be abstract. Yeah. Uh you can really play with it or you could even use it as a background and then paint on top of it or mm -hmm. you know and really look, add and to it. Options. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're gonna do another dirty pour, but we're going to apply it differently. Um, so still put all of your paint into your cup, mm -hmm. and then we're going to lightly swirl it out of the cup. So use the same amount of paint as you did for your last dirty pour. So we should call it like a dirty swirl. Dirty swirl, <laughs> there we go. Let's see what color. I really like this blue going back to that. Yeah. Maybe I'll do. Bonnie says very pretty. Thanks, Bonnie. They are very pretty. And they all look so different. Mm -hmm. What colors are you doing? I don't know. Um, well, so far I have some lilac and some wine. Oh, that's a pretty, pretty. Yeah, that is a nice red. But I don't know. Maybe this and some mm -hmm. gold. Oh, maybe I'll add some pinks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm doing pinks and blues. We'll see yeah. how it goes. I figure if they mix, it's okay. Be you stole my coals. Old is gone. Mm And a nice thing with these paints is because they are so fluid, you can really get down to the last drop. Like you mm -hmm. can really just let it sit for a little bit, and let gravity pull it all down. Yep. You can just squeeze it out. Yep. Or like thicker paints, you kind of end up losing a bit of the paint at the end Yeah. because it's so thick and stuck in the bottle. Yeah. And you can really do a lot of projects with the amount of paint in them. Mm -hmm. and these are four fluid ounces. But usually use more than one color at a time so it goes pretty far right so right now <laughs> yeah i'm going to start in the middle and just lightly swirling it so i'm going to start slowly pouring it and you can kind of see more come out Your hands in the way. oh well you swirl. can't really see <laughs> well it's happening. Well, now you can see it better. There. Yeah, yeah you can see all the swirlings. So this gives you, it's just a lot, um, the colors get a lot more mixed up. Mm -hmm. And then this too, when we, um, all of these lines will spread out a lot 
once we start moving it around. Uh, make mine more towards the left. And then I think I'm going to do another one on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that gorgeous spark. Well, this one I have more of my darker blue <laughs> since that was on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, so for this one, the bottom color, yeah, you do see a lot more. Mm -hmm. You can already see my bubbles in there, my cells. I just call them bubbles. Yeah, bubbles, cells, circles, cool dots. And then you're just going to tilt it around. Same thing. Very easy Go to do. It. Yep. Tilt it around until you like it. And then also you can paint, if you really don't like a painting, let it dry and paint over it again. Yep. yep. I've done that We've many done that. times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or it's just like you just have fun in the making process yeah. and you don't know what to do with all these canvases. Just paint make over. Them. Yeah, just paint over and make more on top of them. Sure. Yeah, cuz they can and you could even um like leave some of the old painting showing through. So you can get mm -hmm. like a really cool layered looking yes. painting. That'd be fun. I'm trying to get my edges here without losing my big line. So the more you play around with it, the more comfortable you'll get. Mm -hmm. But it's really not, it's not that hard. It's yeah. like a really good beginner way of painting yeah yeah or like if you're not a big drawer or anything this is fun painting mm -hmm. and it looks cool it just looks yeah. really cool and it's fun to do like with friends and family mm -hmm. yeah like have a when, little painting party when we can have painting parties again yep. <laughs> yeah fun I think I'm going to add a little big space to this now. Because why not? Because why not? Why not? <laughs> Bonnie says, a gallery wall of creations. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be very cool. That's what we have in the back. Uh, Clint always likes to keep all of the paintings and hang them all and keep hanging them all even when there's probably too many <laughs> and then he always wants new ones yes well he can hang these ones up. yeah get some fresh ones up there he was just saying he hasn't gotten a new painting for a while it's mm. like well just you wait for our next class yep here we go new painting here we go cool Ooh, I like this. Yeah, like that. Got kind of. Yeah. Might use the blower tool on this one a Ooh. little bit. We're getting paint all over the table. We try to protect our table. Try, and then we've had classes on top of it a bunch of times, and trying. Hmm. Very good. I might want to blow it too. Yeah. I don't know. Ooh. When you do blow it, it kind of mixes the colors too. Yeah. I'm getting some purple over here. Um, and I don't know if you've seen, but this is kind of, if you can kind of see like on, I don't know, the main camera. This is how I've been holding it. Mm. Um, it does make it easier if you're doing it on a canvas and then you can just kind of stick your fingers up oh, into yeah, it. Yeah. And that makes a good good thing to hold hold it with. Yeah, if it was just a flat, like a flat canvas or thick paper, you might want to put it on something else that you can move around. Mm -hmm. You like could even tape or... it onto. Yeah, you could tape it onto something. Yeah. Um, 
scrape off the edges or... For this one, I didn't want to um, open up any big areas, so I'm, mm. I'm blowing it from farther away, so it just kind of will mm. pop open some cells here and there, but it isn't moving around the paint. I feel like more of my colors are showing through as it mm. Yeah, and then your painting will change too as mm -hmm. it dries because it's going to continue to drip off. Mm -hmm. The drip. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting tiny little bubbles. I like that look. I'm also blowing flakes all over. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Actually, this painting might be my favorite one Ooh, of today. I like it. It's got a lot of um, lines in it that we got from the swirling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add some foil. Thanks. Hmm. Hmm. I would add these to every project if <laughs> I could, probably. Oh. And then while well, she's adding the foil, I also wanted to show you on a dry painting. So this has been completely dried. Oh, I got paint on it. Yeah. But it's completely dried. And if your painting still needs a little something extra, you can add, we have these paint markers. Mm -hmm. These are specifically made for color pour paintings. Um, I'll go with the silver. Yeah. I already have some silver in my painting here. Um, so how you get these to work is you've got to push down the tip to get the paint flowing down into it. And then kind of like with the foil, I like to find s certain areas and just highlight them. Yeah. Like certain lines to yeah. follow or... Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it really looks like it's just part of the painting. I'm just foiling my corners. That's what I feel like doing. <laughs> There's no wrong way to foil or color pour. You don't like it? You know, know where it. it. Yep. Start again. Yep. Find a new technique. There's so many techniques yeah. out there. You really can get the paint on there yep. however you want. You just. Move it and tilt it. Yep. One time I tried to do this outside on a nice day. Yeah. Because I thought, I'm like, oh, it's really messy. I'll just go outside and do a couple of these color pour paintings. And I brought out my foil flakes, right? Oh. Mm -mm. I can already see where this Not story's a good heading. Idea. <laughs> Foil flakes everywhere. Oh, they were all over the table. The wind blew them. I mean, our neighbor's yard was probably very sparkly. Yeah. But now I know. Don't. Yeah, don't, don't take outside. them where there's any airflow. I mean, even if there's a fan, yeah. they'll be gone. <laughs> they'll just, They're just gonna be everywhere. fly across anywhere. Yeah. Yes. But they're so pretty. It's worth it. I know. I like it. Yeah, I like the silver. Yeah. Well, I already had some silver paint in here. So you can kind of play off that, or you could add a completely different color. And you also don't just have to trace the shapes if you want to, like, draw something on mm -hmm. top of it. Or a name. That would be cool. Oh, yeah. Or some yep. name. Yeah, like if you had a, this shows up really good against black, so if you did have like a really black yeah. color pour with maybe just like a few splotches in there of different colors, yeah, that would be really cool. I just, I should, probably should just stop. <laughs> but it's just so pretty. I love foil. 
Because now I'm going to see it everywhere for the yeah. next week. <laughs> you see it all yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> We're just breathing it in. Oh. Yummy. I don't know how toxic these are, but... Mm, I wouldn't think necessarily toxic, but plastic. You don't really yeah. want to inhale the plastic. Mm -hmm. So I guess try your best, everybody, not to do that. Try not to inhale the oil. All right. All right. I think we are done for today. So we showed you the different pouring techniques and, and what you can do. Dirty add pour, to them. did a swirl, dirty, dirty swirl, swirl. <laughs> and then the swipe technique. Swiping. Let us know which one was your favorite. Yeah. And try them out. Yeah. And post pictures. Yeah. So we can see them. Tag us on social media. Um, and you can post them in our comments here on this slide and, or in our gallery, wherever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then next week, Friday, same time, 4 PM, our next class is, 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 what is it? What is it? Um, embossing folders, mixed oh, media embossing <laughs> folders. Yeah. And that's, that'll be a cool That'll class. be really fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, any, we both love mixed media. We do. We're, um, yes. so, and we figured there's always like different embossing folder things, but we mm -hmm. don't see much like mixed media adding it into the embossing yeah. folders. Yeah. So we'll so be, be going really over fun. some techniques with that. Okay. Thanks for joining yep. everyone. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll see you next a time. A lot of mess. But yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. Have a good weekend mm -hmm. and see you next time. See you next time. <laughs>